I've been looking forward to this day, but now I'm dreading it because of what we're up against with my Coilo Stylus Ciliaris variety or Steady Eye. I'm going to post a link in the description to a video where I dealt with the missing 50% of this orchid because of bacterial rot that had encroached and really spread very, very quickly during the latter part of winter. And the roots are already far too long for my liking, so I am up against it. I have been observing some other pseudobulbs rotting out out at the base. I think we have enough of this orchid to work with. Please excuse the dust on the leaves. As everything is a little bit touch and go with this orchid, I have not been wiping the leaves. And being touch and go, being weakened, of course, I've got also some pest issues that I've been trying to get under control. But the good thing is we also have new growths coming that will hopefully be stronger so we can restart this orchid. But I'm also looking at it from a distance. My strategy here is actually just to center it back into the bowl and let it continue growing. I had no intention of dividing this orchid unless it were to be the healthy big specimen I had earlier in the season because I wanted to gift some pieces away. Well, that's not happening, but I think we're going to have to divide this orchid as well because of how the left side is already encroaching to the edge of the pot. So, welcome to the patio. We have our work cut out for us. I am going to do my absolute best to save all the gorgeous root tips that we are seeing. However, my main focus is to get her back in the pot and then possibly even bury some of the rhizomes so we don't have to worry too much about any root tips frazzling out. I am so appreciative of you being here and it would be awesome if you would please already give this video a thumbs up much much needed the support is so welcome and appreciated as well as if you would subscribe to the channel thank you let's get into oh my let's get into it what i would like to do is just lift the whole thing out of the pot but am i going to ruin some pseudobulbs while i'm at it nope oh this is oh this is wonderful I know, I know, it looks awful, but oh, for me, what a relief. What a relief. Oh, I'll explain in just a minute. I've got to make sure that no lecker beads get into the mouth of a puppy. While I have my biggest catch tray, I heard a lecker bead fall onto the patio. Oh, and he looked right, and I can't find it, so... Please don't go looking while I'm paying attention to what I need to be doing here. See all these roots to the side that had rotted out. They're dead because all I did was chop off at the rhizome. Maybe I should get you in a little bit closer. So you can see right here is where the rot ended, but I lost this pseudobulb. I think it looks extremely shriveled compared to all the others and it's hollow. So that part I think we can get rid of. And I think I'm just going to cut it right where the roots are because of that beautiful root tip. Let's see if I can't just lift it out. Excuse the dirty hands, I'm sorry. All part and parcel of a project like this. You see, that pseudobulb is all bendy bendy. So the issue may have already been down here. Yep, there it is. There it is. That's how it started. And it spread ferociously throughout the entire orchid. Anyway, let's keep going because I do see some good roots here, but I'm not going to worry about them too much. It's encouraging that it's branching. That gives me hope for the rest of the root system. You can see more nice roots down there. You can also see that the first time this orchid arrived on the patio, I potted it up in just lava rock, which is probably something I should repeat and do because this orchid really struggles with my cold temperatures during the winters in Lekka. But that's a lot of lava rock. I may need to just go with what I know. It was doing okay. Well, better than okay because it filled the whole bowl within a three year period. So vigor is not the problem, but I need lava rock for eventualities and seeing as there's going to be less in the pot of this orchid coming soon as we divide her i think there will be enough insulation around all the other roots they should be absolutely fine for the next two or three winters and then we can always assess the circumstances and the situation and see what we need to do moving forward but for now we're sticking with leka in self-watering back into the bowl just want to get her cleaned up Oh, 
also had some mold issues, clearly. Rot, bacteria, mold, damp, cold, all of it happening in one area. Luckily, today is an overcast day, so she, when I stress her out, it's not gonna be too bad for her to recover. And I have about 77% humidity today, which is great. Look at this gorgeousness right here, weaving its way through. We'll see if we can maintain that. I'm gonna do, as I mentioned, the best that I can. My aim is to get her separated so that I can put her back in the same pot. We might as well already use hydrogen peroxide because that can work its magic while we work. Hopefully, our own magic. I very rarely use hydrogen peroxide on my roots, seeing as I don't have any snail issues. It's not a standard practice of mine. I don't mind taking over any beneficials that have built a little colony into the pot. I'll carry them over gladly, but mold is not one of those beneficials. That's a different kind of <laughs> invasion. I'm not having it. Look at how bad that was. Wow. As I'm doing this, I'm looking where I want to make my cut so I can work towards that without losing too many structures. I believe that if I can get in here and separate her out right at this rhizome, we'll be quite okay for the coming years. What is the difference between root and rot? I'll give you a minute. Did you figure it out? A single letter, the letter O. <laughs> well, I have run into an issue here. Beautiful root going right across where I need to separate this orchid. Attached to lava rock. <clears throat> this is why I say lava rock is wonderful, but when it comes time to repot, the detriment to viable roots. So I'm just going to work my way towards that and see what I can excavate out of the root ball in the hopes that something is gonna come off easily, but I doubt it. I think we have to be a little bit more radical in that we have to encourage that root to come off with the root tip, of course, why not? <laughs> oh my, oh my, yikes. Poor root tip. I don't want it to become collateral damage because it's right up there. Well, we're gonna need it. Where else are you attached? And another root tip. Ay, ay, ay. Ooh. Root tips everywhere on that one root. Macho. Okay, take your time. If nothing else, orchid growers are also archeologists. <laughs> Gah, I missed it. Hi, yay, yay. Alrighty. Never mind. Keep going. Stay brave. Are you loose? Oh, you Nina. Tweezers on a root tip. That one will probably be history as well now. I need to find out where this root is going. And I want to be as careful as possible because whatever happens throughout the process of this repot, in the beginning I need to be super careful if I then eventually, whoop, we did it. If I eventually lose all this, I don't want it to be right at the beginning. I want to know what we're up against and not go all ninja straight away. Can you see the ravine I'm trying to create for myself? All the while, <clears throat> root tip is in my visual. That's where I wanna go through. This is only phase one. Once I've got her separated, then I can focus a little bit more on a tidier root trim. And trust, if I wasn't separating her, cutting the rhizome, I would not be being this radical. Well, there's a light at the end of this tunnel. <laughs> Alrighty. 
Got some root tips here. I'd like to be mindful of those, but I doubt I will be able to. We'll be more mindful of the new growths. And if we lose root tips, c'est la vie. Mon ami. Ooh, so beautiful. Oh, tunnel vision, just keep going. My assessment is that was the last thing that was attaching one piece to the other. Alrighty. So now we can make our cut. Here goes nothing. All right. I think I have another rhizome going across here. Let's do some more root ball cleanup before we make another cut. Let's see what we're up against. I thought I only needed to make one. That was the plan anyway. Regroup, reassess, and as my dad always said, steady as she goes, when he was using the bow thruster for the ship. I'm gonna make another cut there and see what happens. All right, I know you guys have been together all these years, it's time to become independent. Let's go. There we go. Okay. Now, I am going to get a fresh tray, <laughs> clean up this mess, and then we're going to clean up the two pieces. Okay, let's just bring one piece to our attention here. Get that cleaned up, not crowd the tray too much. Lots of new growth on this. Got my eyes going everywhere like a chameleon. Just making sure I don't miss the mark. Now there's really no need for me to be doing what I'm doing now, but seeing as we've come this far, and it's the first time in six years that this orchid has been dug into to all the way to the center with the lava rock, and we've had mold, we've seen that, we're gonna just go for it and really tidy her up. And then I'll probably go MIA on YouTube for a couple of days because what a mess to clean up that lecker. <laughs> That's gonna take a couple of days. chain. Another root tip. Well, as long as we don't do too much damage on the new ones, we're good. Oh, bummer. You see? Mm, didn't see that. I wanted to avoid that. Oh, well. That's a shame. I didn't want three pieces. Ah, I knew there was something not quite right. But anyway, here we are. Make sure that I don't lose any of these gorgeous new growths. This leaf was cold damage from two winters ago. Fern, be gone. Sometimes cutting uh, the roots right at the base is not the right thing to do because the rest of the root could be viable. But... Sometimes you just get ahead of yourself and then, oops. So I was just checking if that was the case there, but it wasn't, thankfully. There we go, piece number two. So in the end, I did separate her, but not with the intention of what I was trying to do <laughs> for this orchid this season. All right, let's get piece number three. Broke a root tip. Yikes. Okay, there's no need to be so radical with this one. If the others start to struggle, then this one will give us at least another beautiful section. Of course, I'm tempted to take off all these sheaths, but Coilostyrus have a very, very, and I emphasize, very sticky, happy sap. So it's a lot of effort to take the dried sheaths off, and I don't need to be stressing this orchid out any further by messing just because I want to get sheaths off. And even as they dry, they feel slimy because of the happy sap once it's wet. That's why they're so prone to pests. And in my case, it's scale and mealybugs. This is a new growth where the sheath should stay on, but it's wet now. This one's wet as well. I'm gonna be watching that. But anyway, 
I'm going to clean up my pot and we will be potting these three, unfortunately three pieces up. And I hope you will still be around on the flip side. So in real time, it has been quite some time since I started this video. What I'm going to do as well is ask you once again, if you enjoy content like this, trust me, there's more coming. So please subscribe. We still have Encyclia Garciana Alba to deal with. Similar situation, that one. If you think this one is carnage, that one is going to be super duper carnage. And well, yes, I don't think you want to miss it. <laughs> Alrighty, I have a little puzzle in my head right now. I have to consider that I am not going to wire this orchid in. I really don't want to wire her in. I want every single piece to kind of support itself and other pieces. What I'm going to do here is position the orchid in such a way that every single piece supports itself plus the other piece. So no wires going on. I also want to make sure that my microfibers are within easy reach because of getting the humidity higher into the pot. I have not filled with water. I may, but first of all, I am just gonna be putting Lekka in dry, as in seco, because I don't want my pieces floating around. And lastly, what I have to consider is the direction of growth. And I am not looking at all the growths in which direction they're growing, because this orchid is like a creeper. It can go anywhere and everywhere with the growths. I am looking at the direction of the leaves because of the way I have to position the orchid as it used to be with the main direction of light. So I don't want some leaves, and maybe this will help you out as well if you're putting more than one piece of the same orchid back into a pot. You want to make 100% sure that you're not putting a leaf direction in the opposite direction. Try and reposition your pieces so that the main direction of light is consistent across all pieces. So that is why it's taking me a little bit longer because I have to make sure about that. And there's a little bit of a mealy bug there, which we will deal with straight away. It can take an orchid a considerable amount of energy to reposition the leaves, or what can also happen, worst case scenario, is that the leaves will burn because of the way the orchid will then be positioned in one direction for one side or one piece that is great, but the other piece is gonna struggle. And you can see I've got no media because I want her low in the pot to increase the humidity levels. And of course, you don't want the growths right up against the edge of the pot because the idea is we don't want to be doing this again next year. <laughs> and if we have to, then only because the orchid is doing great. <laughs> I don't want to get into this again. She's still quite close to the edge there. So now I'm going to strategically get my lecker out because that is going to be my third hand. And if I'm shouting, I'm sorry, I'm excited. <laughs> okay, two out of three are where I want them. Now, you. Your leaves are also going in that direction, so that's what we're going to do with you. We'll keep you a smidge higher because of all of your new growths. Enter third hand. My Lekka is going to go right in the back here because this is important with the growths where they are and the distance to the edge of the pot. Oh, it's holding on by itself. Great. For the time being, I'm using large lecker just to make sure the orchid is in position. I'm not going to do this five times with small lecker. I broke a new growth. When did that happen? Ay, zut alors. Look right towards the end of our project. What a shame. There's another new growth right next to it, but Ah, I was hoping to avoid that. Now we're going to fill up with small lecker, but not fill up. I'm filling around. Okay. Now, in the coming days, I can still fuss with this. You can see my microfibers out here. I don't really need it all the way out there, but for now, the orchid is safe. I broke quite a number of root tips. 
which is inevitable for a project like this. Breaking the new growth annoys me the most though. However, I've got about eight or 10, depending on which piece you're looking at, but in total about eight or 10 new growths coming. So that's what we're gonna be working with. And hopefully some of the new root tips that we just put into the Leka will start doing their job quickly. The older root tips may still hang on. Got some dead root tips over here. I can fill Lekka over there. We can just do that little touch up together. The direction of light will come from where we're stood because all the leaves are facing in the same direction. See that? It's very important when you put more than one piece of the same orchid back into the pot. Respect the general direction of light. Wow. <laughs> Real-time repot, just shy of two hours. But I sincerely hope that you enjoyed this video, that there was something in it that you can take away and apply in your own repots. And if nothing else, that you at least enjoyed watching. That is the most important thing for me. So thank you ever, ever so much for watching. I truly appreciate your support. Wishing you a wonderful and fabulous day on the condition though, please, that you stay safe. And this is what I have cut out for me for the coming days. It's gonna be a nightmare. <laughs> oh.